Welcome everyone, today we're going to be covering a subject I wouldn't normally cover, and this is the helicopters in War Thunder. So, I've been playing a lot of Enduring Confrontation for the helicopter event, it's an arcade event, it's been out since pretty much the start of helicopters on War Thunder. So just so that you know all the gameplay in the background is just me using the g Lynx, which is the British premium helicopter I've been trying to grind towards the Apache AH Mark I. Now, the problem is that there are two helicopters, which are the KA-50 and KA-52, that at the moment trump every other helicopter in pretty much every aspect. Now, the reason for this is partly due to its armament. So it currently gets access to the Vikers missiles, which are dual purpose missiles. So they have the first function of attacking ground targets as anti-tank guarded missiles with a tandem warhead to get through your explosive reactive armor. Now, the second function is that they work as air to air missiles. So they have to be laser guided, but they are still air-to-air -air missiles. They have a proximity fuse, so as soon as they come close to an aircraft, they will detonate and hopefully destroy the aircraft. Now, obviously, this isn't an issue in itself, because these missiles are real. This aircraft does carry them in real life, and both the K-50 and K-52 have access to these. So most top-tier helicopters have something known as MORS, which is a missile approach warning system. And this is for the Apache AH Mark I, the AH-1Z, the K-50, all the modern-day helicopters have these. But the issue is that MORS never really detects them. And even when the missile gets very, very close to you, it still hasn't detected that there is a launch. This is in partnership with the missile being able to fire from 10 kilometers away. It's pretty much out of visual range, so you don't know the missile's coming until it has hit you, like I've said. Now, the second issue with Enduring Confrontation and KA-50s is that every helicopter in the game gets put into the same games as KA-50s. So you could be in an AH-1G just starting your first time flying a helicopter, and you thought, okay, maybe I'll take it into a an Enduring Confrontation game just to make some XP really easily. Now both KA-50s are modern helicopters, they have access to modern munitions like we've discussed. But then the poor AH-1G only has access to air-to-ground rockets, it doesn't have access to any kind of air-to-air -air missiles, it doesn't have access to flares, it doesn't have access to moors, it doesn't have access to RWR. It is a very basic helicopter that's designed for attacking ground targets. Now hopefully you guys can see the issue of having a helicopter that was designed in the 1960s to fighting a helicopter that was designed in the 1990s and 2000s. So briefly talking about Tank RB, Tank RB is probably the more balanced variant of this because obviously AH-1Gs will only really get up tiered to 9.0 games where you've only got radar guided guns, you don't really have surface to air missiles or air to air missiles really. So the first solution I would put is that you have two separate game modes for helicopter enduring confrontation. You have one where you have all the modern helicopters such as the Apache and the KA-50 and then you have a second game type, which is the lower tier helicopters like the AH-1G and the Hueys, so that you don't have a situation where you just get completely decimated by modern day helicopters when you're trying to fly around attacking ground targets. Now, the reason I say this is because I have friends, and this is even me before I decided to buy my premium helicopter, is that in Enduring Confrontation, it is not a fun experience when you just constantly get shot down by KA-50s. At least when you have more modern helicopters like the g Lynx, which I obviously paid for because it's a premium, you have the ability to at least combat them in some way, rather than just being completely destroyed by them. However, this does move on to my next point, which is that the NATO helicopters are very limited in the way that they can combat KF-50s, and this again is for a number of reasons. Now, obviously, the NATO helicopters have a primary air-to-air -air armament of Stingers, and Stingers only have a range of two miles, when KF-50s can hit you from much, much further away. And now you can see how this can be frustrating when you're trying to sneak up on one. Now, obviously, I know that the British Apache gets access to the Star Streaks, which I think have a range of about four miles, which is, you know, slightly better, but it's still not great. But I do have a solution to at least make helicopters a little bit more competitive against each other. So to start off, the reason why I play War Thunder is because of the realism aspect. I mean, I appreciate that this is not a perfect, realistic game. I do understand that completely. It's an arcade -y kind of game in that sense that it's easy enough for people to pick up. Now, one thing that I have noticed with War Thunder is that there is one nation that always benefits from the realism aspect of things, whereas other nations will deliberately not have their realistic weapon loadouts that they would normally have. Now, that is Russia. Russian vehicles have basically got access to every kind of munition that they would have in real life. Now this is clearly shown with the new ATGM launching vehicle that the Russians got, which is the one that can lock things with radar and fire two missiles at once, essentially firing one missile at a ground target locked by the radar and then firing one freely. So that's two missiles in the air at once. And then going back to helicopters, you have things like the AH-1 and the AH-64D and the AH-64DJP, which are all Apaches that have the longbow radar system. Now, 
the only weapon that these aircraft should always have, because it was designed specifically for the radar that they have, is the Longbow Hellfire. Now the Longbow Hellfire, although it won't be in any way a counter to the Ka-50 because it is an air-to-ground missile, the Longbow Hellfire has the ability to essentially seek its own target. Once it's locked a target on the radar, you can then fire the Hellfire and the Hellfire will make its own way to the target without you having to manually guide it. Now I don't exactly know why Gaijin hasn't added this because it doesn't really make sense. They obviously have the technology to have self-guiding missiles, which is shown by a radar-guided missile from the new ATGM launcher. But without giving longbow hellfires to the Apaches that should have them, it puts them at a significant disadvantage. Although the radar can track ground targets, and you can obviously lock ground targets from it and find them and acquire targets much easier, it does still limit you into having to expose yourself for a longer period of time to engage that target. Which obviously puts you at a disadvantage when you have surface-to-air missiles and radar-guided guns against you. Now obviously I'm not expecting this to in any way shape or form be a counter to the Ka-50 because the Ka-50 can obviously still shoot you down with their 10km ranged missiles and the Apache's Hellfires are just not designed to engage air targets. I mean you can hit air targets with Hellfires but it's a lot more difficult than it would be for a Ka-50 to hit you. But the reason why I think they should add it is A because it is realistic and that helicopter did carry it in real life and B because it gives the Apache something that the Ka-50 doesn't have, the ability to essentially play hide and seek with its targets. And the way this would work is that the Apache could sit behind a tree line, pop up to a point where it acquires a target on radar, fire the missile and then essentially run away without guiding the missile. Now in real life when the longbow hellfire loses tracking to a target it will automatically seek a new target. Now. A way that this would automatically balance itself is that if you fire one of these missiles into the air and it loses its tracking on an enemy tank and it happens to find a friendly tank, it could then potentially hit a friendly tank. Now, I understand that that could be frustrating, but it at least would be a reasonably good balance for a missile that's self-guiding. And like I said before, I have absolutely no problem with the Ka-50 being powered the way it is. Like, it's not underpowered and it's not overpowered but I do feel that all the NATO helicopters suffer because they are underpowered, because they don't have the access to munitions that they're meant to have. Another example of vehicles that don't have the munitions they're meant to have is like the Challenger 2 and Challenger 2F. They don't have access to the L27 or L28 rounds that they do have in real life. So before we stray off the subject completely, I would at least like to think that these changes or adding these longbow hellfires to the game would at least make helicopters slightly more diverse and give helicopters certain advantages that the Ka-50s might not have, meaning that, especially in tank RB games, they have something that they can do that the Ka-50 can't do. Just as a final point, I would like to see Gaijin at least try and make some kind of change towards how Moors works, because at the moment Moors does not work properly. It doesn't detect any kind of missile launches, it doesn't detect ATGM launches like it should, and I feel like they should at least address that for helicopters that do have moors in real life. Just briefly, I have also seen other YouTubers mention about the grind with helicopters. I know the tech tree is very small and helicopters are very powerful, so I don't think the grind really needs changing, I just think the gameplay aspects need changing. But anyways guys, this is just my opinion. Take it with a pinch of salt. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you liked what you saw, please leave me a like, and if you're new here, subscribe. But thank you all very much for watching.